So Matt over at the Dark Path YouTube channel is having a contest in celebration of reaching 1,000 subscribers on the platform. The contest has one rule, show a pair of albums that go together. I'm going to go through a number of paired albums as well as their appeal to me as paired albums. Some of the appeal might transfer over to you, but I'm going to talk about me as well. So, should be a good time, so stick around. So it stands the reason that we all love a nice pair. From personal experience, I know I really appreciate a nice pair. A nice pair of records? Yeah, let's go with records. In fact, let's do five pairs of records from my collection, talk a little about them and their appeal. In fact, let's just get straight to that. Why not? So the first pair of albums I want to get to are these two. This is Exodus with Bonded by Blood, as well as Slayer with Hell Awaits. Now, of course, these both came out in 1985, but that's not the common tie I want to talk about. For me, the big correlation between these two albums is this. This is the Ultimate Revenge home video, also came out in 1985. Uh, these are live performances of these two bands touring these two albums. Uh, Venom's on here as well, though maybe peripherally speaking. Uh, there's a two-part interview with Venom, as well as a couple music videos. They're not playing the Studio 54 show, at least not on this tape, and there are a few theories as to why that is. Uh, you can look that up if you want. I talked about it in a previous video as well. Uh, this really is my first introduction to live thrash metal. Um, seeing it and hearing it, um, and definitely probably my first taste of Exodus. I already was into Slayer by this time. I had Hind the Chapel and Shona Mercy, and I was really into Venom at this point. I think I had everything up to Possessed at this time. So Venom might have been the sell point to me, but then in inadvertently I got into more into Slayer and first into Exodus through this tape. Um, again, pretty big deal. I had never seen live thrash. I had never seen a, a thrash crowd. I was pretty excited about this tape. Uh, those two albums always remind me of this tape and the experience of seeing this for the first so many times. Um, I wouldn't see a live thrash show until late 1986. Uh, I was at the Channel Club in Boston, it was Slayer on Rain and Blood uh, with Overkill opening. Overkill was still uh, touring Feel the Fire. Um, Wargasm was there too, for those who remember that Boston band. But yeah. So the Ultimate Revenge is the big tie to those two albums. Every time I hear those two albums anywhere near each other or together, I always think of this tape and the great memories of experiencing thrash metal in a live setting for the first time, albeit on tape. So my next two pairs are these classic albums from the early 90s. This is Morbid Angel with Blessed Are the Sick, as well as Napalm Death with Harmony Corruption. Of course, a big tie with these two albums is Earache Records. And that figures peripherally into my story and how they pair up for me. Um, back at this time, I was metal director at a college radio station. Um, I was really excited about metal directing because the station I was at had absolutely no metal whatsoever. Um, this was the early 90s, so there was a lot of the hair band stuff coming in as well as some other stuff uh, the station itself uh, there were a lot of DJs doing hippie jam band stuff and Grateful Dead but also a lot of jazz so the station was full of that but there was no metal to be found uh, real metal of course so I talked to the general manager and I'm like uh, I'm now metal director how can I get albums into this place and he's like call the labels so I picked up some of the trade mags that had some of the phone numbers and addresses to get hold of people um, I did talk to Rake Records not Dig Pearson but someone else there. Uh, but I also contacted Roadrunner and Combat and Nuclear Blast and Century Media and all of those cool labels back then uh, to get product servicing, is what they called it back then. And so in the space of two weeks, literally hundreds of CDs came flooding into the station. And I was very excited. So were a lot of other people. In fact, uh, a lot of metal shows all of a sudden cropped up at the station because I now had a library for them to pull from, as well as their own. So I was pretty excited about that. These two albums remind me of that period big time, um, especially with Earache Records, because we had a lot of Earache coming in. Um, you remember the early 90s, if you do, of course. Um, that, that label was heavily prolific. They were putting out a lot of stuff in 1990, 91, 92, um, even the late 80s. So metal directing, it was a really good time for me. These albums always remind me of that. And I do listen to these together sometimes. Um, they kind of fit. They were released a year apart, by the way, but that doesn't really matter. Um, I think I got Alters of Madness that same day um, from the labels. So there you go. There's the pair. So the next two pairs here are Girl School with Hit and Run, as well as Motorhead with No Remorse. I guess I could have picked any Girl School record. I do have this one. I don't have any others on vinyl. 
Uh, but I do pick these two specifically, these two bands specifically, because of the collaboration these two bands did back in 1981 called Head Girl. <laughs> Amazing name. Uh, back in February of 1981, they put out the St. Valentine's Day Massacre. It had um, a collaboration between the two bands doing Please Don't Touch as well as Emergency. I think there were a couple other tracks as well. Uh, the two tracks I just mentioned are on Motorhead's No Remorse album, so there's the tie as well. Um, you might remember last month, June of 2021, that for Record Store Day, there was a reissue of the St. Valentine's Day Massacre in picture disc form. Um, it originally did come in 7-inch as well as 10-inch, but I think this picture disc was a 10-inch. Uh, if, you're, if you're wanting to find that, it should be somewhere out there, probably at a very inflated price. But pretty cool. Girl School and Motorhead. Um, a lot of people pair these two bands up. Uh, a lot of people say that Girl School sounds like a female Motorhead. I don't hear that as much, as I've said before. I think they have a lot more in common with bands like The Runaways. Um, they are more of a girl group in that respect. Um, I always thought Venom had more in common with Motorhead than Girl School did. Of course, you can fight me in the comments about that if you like. So, yeah, Girl School and Motorhead. Like peanut butter and jelly. Next up, we have Iron Maiden with The Number of the Beast and Kiss with Lick It Up. An interesting pairing, no doubt. Uh, these did not come out the same year. Maiden was 82, Kiss was 83. Uh, the big tie here, and I might have mentioned a little of this in the Metal Origins video, I can't recall. I don't think I went into it, which is what I'm going to do now for you, is that these two albums were albums that I attempted to shoplift as a 15-year-old kid and failed miserably. So, I'll explain it quickly. Um, my buddy Mike and I, this was in January of 1984. Uh, for those who watch the Metal Origin story, you know that that's about a month into me getting back into the city and experiencing all sorts of cool stuff because I had lived in a lot of other far-flung places. I'm not going to go through that story. So he and I went to Zares. Zares was a department store back then in the 1980s. They got bought up by Ames later. And I'm not even sure Ames is even around. If they are, let me know, I guess. So uh, they had an amazing cassette section in their store and basically I, I swiped the cassettes of these two albums um this will be the last thing i'd ever stole in my life by the way which i guess is makes it a milestone of sorts and so we uh we got the tapes and we were walking out of the store and then right before we got to the door mike was like let me go buy something so it looks legit and I'm, and then he, he starts walking I'm like no 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 don't but he walks to the register anyways so i'm at the door and i'm just kind of nodding my head going all right all right, we got to get out of here. We got to get out of here. So I put my hand on the door, and that's when the security guy grabbed me by the collar. And he's like, nope, come in with me. So took me to the back office. They took Mike out of line as well. And um, so we got into the manager's office, and, you know, obviously we had to give up the tapes. And so uh, the guy was like, so call your parents and have them pick you up, and you're banned from the store for two years. If you can't reach your parents, well, we're going to have to involve the police. So Mike's mom showed up. Mike's mom is this big, scary Polish woman. She was maybe like 300 pounds, screaming in my face. I was actually a little bit scared. I looked over her shoulder at the uh, security guy going, are you going to do something? Right? So uh, she got done yelling at me. Uh, she said I couldn't hang out with her son anymore. Kind of figured. She left. It was my turn. So I tried to call everyone I knew, possibly. Couldn't reach anyone. So, true to their word, they called the police. So the police came, they handcuffed me, they paraded me through the store, and then they threw me in the back of the paddy wagon with about six smelly homeless drunks. Really scary, smelly homeless drunks. And so they took me downtown, and I was in an office, I sat in a chair for a while, and I guess one of the cops knew who I was because my grandmother worked at the police department as a clerk. So they called her, and she came down, and I couldn't have been more shamed at that moment. It wasn't that I got caught. It was really just looking at my grandmother's face as she's walking through this uh, row of her coworkers, just with her head down. And she took me home, and of course I was forbidden to see Mike again, and I was banned from Zares for two years, whatever the hell that meant. I went in there six months later buying like metal paraphernalia. But uh, So that's the big story with these two albums. What was funny is I already had Lick It Up. I was actually stealing it for Mike. And Iron Maiden I was stealing for myself. But what happened was that I kind of forgot about Iron Maiden after that. Um, I would have gotten into Iron Maiden at that point. Uh, it would be many months later. It was when Power Slave came out later in 1984. I think it was September. And yeah, so I would have gotten into Iron Maiden about nine months earlier, I guess, had I succeeded. And, and then I got a job because I turned 16 years old. And I guess I felt I didn't need to steal 
I guess. Yeah, it's not a prideful moment in my life, to be honest, but yeah. So these two albums together always remind me of that incident and the smelly drunks in the back of the paddy wagon. <laughs> so this next pairing is probably the most unlikeliest pairing of the lot. This is Metallica with Master of Puppets, as well as Turbo by Judas Priest. Of course, I've already talked about Turbo in depth on my Do I Still Hate show. Uh, you should definitely check out that to get a lot of details about that album. Um, some of the things I mentioned in that episode, I mentioned briefly and kind of allude to the story I'm about to tell you. So this is the full story. So these are what I affectionately call the Reno albums. Reno is a city in Nevada. Uh, it is the biggest little city in the world, whatever the hell that means. Um, there's a big arch over the entryway to the city that says that. Uh, be that as it may, I was in Reno for a fairly interesting reason, I guess. Um, previous to this, I was living in Worcester, Massachusetts. This is February of 1986 and going to high school. And then I got kicked out of high school. Uh, I was kicked out for being a behavior problem. Uh, too long to go into, but what happened was that my mom in Reno was like, hey, come out to Reno, you can go to night school, you can get your GED, and whatever. So that's what I did. Went out to Reno. So I went to school three nights a week for maybe a couple hours a night. So that gave me a lot more time to do all sorts of stuff, like party and chase girls and stay up all night and go on three-day benders and get in all sorts of trouble. And substances are probably in there as well. So that was my life for three and a half months uh, until I got my diploma and went back east. These two albums are really part of the soundtrack of that experience. There are other albums too. I might do a Reno albums video one day. I don't know if that's of interest. Let me know in the comments because I, I have some fun stories, uh, some very fun stories, but I'm going to leave those out of this. Just talk about these two albums. Uh, Turbo I had mentioned in the Do I Still Hate episode was all about a girl, uh, an older woman, I was involved with a little bit. Uh, she loved this album dearly, so I loved this album at that time to an extent. You can find out if I still do by watching that, that show, Do I Still Hate? But that reminded me of her. This album, however, definitely reminds me of the chaos and the three-day benders and getting into trouble and all of that. Uh, it's a fun little album in that regard. So. When I hear these two albums, I often think of that, that experience in Reno. And again, I'll go into more depth about this if you want me to in a whole separate video. Let me know in the comments. And those are my answers to the Dark Pass 1000 subs contest. Now, of course, I would tell you to check out the contest and enter it, but it has expired by this point. I'm a bit of a late entry. You should still watch Matt's original video, however. I'll link it in the description of my video. He had some cool choices as well. You should also do a YouTube search and see what everyone else did, because they had some cool choices. Since we're on the subject of Matt's channel, you should definitely go and check out his videos. Uh, his deep dive series is particularly interesting. I really loved his Paradise Lost deep dive. He also did one for Ulver and one for Psy. I really want to check out the Christian Death one later. Pretty cool. So yeah, definitely check out his channel. And you know what? Give him a subscription. Get him to 1,000 and whatever now. As for me, my name is also Matt, but this is the Accusation Network. I do metal vinyl collecting videos once or twice a week. You should definitely check out my videos, check out my playlists. Uh, I do more than response videos. I do vinyl hauls and upcoming metal vinyl videos and classic album reviews and all sorts of stuff. So definitely check out the playlists. And if you enjoyed this video, of course, give it a like. Also subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so and share the video with some friends. Also, let me know in the comments what some of your favorite pairs of records are. Let me know that. Let me know how they pair up for you. All of that in the comments. And of course, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.